Are data scientists quitting their jobs in significant levels? In this video, I'm gonna break down the evidence that this is actually happening, the reasons it's probably happening, and then my two cents on where we go from here. I'm Richard, and this is Richard on Data. So you would be forgiven for just assuming that it's clickbait, but there are articles, one after another, on Medium and on other publication websites talking about data scientists quitting their jobs. Now this might seem a little weird, and it certainly flies directly in the face of all the people claiming that data science is the sexiest job of the 21st century and playing up how much money that you can make in the role. Granted, this sort of thing has been part of the workplace culture, at least in the United States, for quite some time, but there is a lot of chatter about this happening in data science to a particularly great extent. And I think the first natural question is, how big is this migration of data scientists out of their jobs? And then before we talk about reasons why it's happening, what's the evidence that it's happening in the first place? Before I do that, I do ask that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and also hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. Hit the like button too if you can spare 1.5 seconds of your day, because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, I am on Patreon, and I'll have a link to that in the description if you would be willing to support me that way. I do greatly appreciate it. There certainly are a few data points which point to that data scientists are actually leaving their jobs. So in particular, the Financial Times has done a piece on this, and there's a couple of surveys that they point to. So in particular, Kaggle did a survey of people, and their finding was that data scientists were spending one to two hours of their day each week looking for jobs. So that's pretty fascinating. But then Stack Overflow surveyed 64,000 developers, and they found that the two kinds who were most likely to be looking for a job were machine learning specialists and data scientists. These are certainly meaningful things, but I will say it is still a little challenging to exactly grasp how big or how widespread of a problem this actually is. And that's in part because I really don't know how representative Kaggle's user base or Stack Overflow's developer community is of the broader data science community as a whole. And that would be very interesting to know because it's always really fascinating to see how these things change across geographical and income lines. But still, there's enough people talking about this issue to where there's at least probably a little bit of there there, and it's worth at least having a conversation about. So based on my own opinions and anecdotes and my research, mostly from reading a lot of the articles that people have written on this topic, I'm going to give to you five big reasons that are standing out for why I think this is happening. So the first reason is actually a pretty important piece of context to keep in mind. Now I'm by no means an expert on all the various economies across the world, but it is important to notice that in the last decade, most economies all around the world have experienced a pretty reasonable period of economic growth. Granted, before the global pandemic occurred, the United States anyway was what's known as an employee's market. That is, the unemployment rate was very low, and it was very common to see people leave their jobs and just go somewhere else that they just generally liked more or that was willing to pay them more money. That's especially true in jobs that pay more, and data science does fall under that category. Data scientists have a lot of skills, and with a lot of skills comes mobility. It is really easy to move around and find something that suits you better. Keep in mind, data science has only really been around since 2011, and during that entire time period, at least until March of 2020, the United States anyway, has been experiencing economic growth and falling unemployment. Economically, we are moving into a new era now as we cope with the global pandemic as well as the resulting economic fallout. So just because data scientists have been quitting their jobs in the last few years, even if that's true, that does not necessarily mean that they're still going to keep that trend going in the future. They might, but we simply don't know that yet. So just keep that in mind. The overall macroeconomic picture does count a lot into this. 
Now that reason is not something that a lot of the articles out there seem to be talking about a lot, but I do think it is one of the single biggest factors that's going on here. As far as the articles are concerned, the single biggest reason that they rightfully point to for data scientists leaving their jobs is expectations not matching reality. And I've talked about this again and again in my videos, but academia and some people in the industry really do push an incredibly misleading picture of what data science actually is. They'll tell you that you spend all day building really complex, sexy, amazing looking neural network models, and that is what the day to day of a typical job looks like. Your courses or books that you're working from give you super clean, tidy looking data sets which require little to no upfront work on your end whatsoever. They're ready to go, they're ready for you to do your magic and make an awesome model. Nothing can be further from the truth, at least as a general rule. I really hope this problem goes away at least a little bit in the coming years as educators become a little bit pressured to paint more accurate pictures of what data science actually is. And additionally, I do hope more educational resources become available which really demonstrate what real world data looks like. Real world data is messy and confusing and it does a bit of a disservice to people just providing clean research style data sets. And I think it's also inherent to data scientists to want to work on projects that are enormously impactful because it's really easy to learn inferential or predictive algorithms and just be able to imagine how these things can drive major awesome change. Unfortunately though, there are a ton of moving parts that go into driving major organizational change. And it happens all the time in the business world that projects get started, but they ultimately don't end up going anywhere. It's just the reality that most data scientists are absolutely going to deliver economic value, but that value is going to be smaller and more incremental. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's just something that you need to be aware of and calibrate yourself to. The next up is the fact that data scientists typically do not enjoy playing politics. So here's what I'll say about this one. I talk a lot in my videos about what an important role communication plays in data science because you can work on this awesome visualization or app or model or whatever it is, but the overwhelming majority of the time, that stuff does no good until you have explained it to somebody and that person has bought into it. And that can be a real pain. People distrust models, they don't understand them. These are very true things. Additionally, sometimes you have to get along with people or impress somebody, and that means doing a little more work than you want to, or just doing work that you frankly feel kind of overqualified to do. I know this has happened to me a little bit in the past myself. Overall, this one is probably going to depend on the age and size of your organization, as well as its data department and culture. And this is something that I think current and aspiring data scientists owe to themselves to look at. When you look at a job description or you go for an interview for a data science job, try to ascertain if that company actually has the culture and the infrastructure that's required to actually adequately support data science. Frankly, it's been surveyed quite recently that as many as 72% of business executives don't believe that they've created a data-driven culture or a data-driven organization. And that's a topic in and of itself, but there's tons of downstream problems that come out of that. That can mean that it's just analysis paralysis when it comes to doing relevant, necessary new analysis or building new infrastructure. It can mean that it's like pulling teeth to get buy-in on things. Or my personal favorite, the next item on this list. And that's being the go-to person for all things data in the organization. There's really not that much to say about this one, except that if you get the sense that the company wants this kind of person, that means you need to run fast and run far away. 
This should mainly be an issue with smaller rather than larger companies, but these are the types of organizations that will provide lists in their job descriptions of 30 different programming languages or technologies or methods that you need to be familiar with. And you need to be an expert at absolutely everything. You work with databases, you do machine learning, you produce reports, you're an expert at everything that happens in the production and deployment life cycle, absolutely everything. This just screams of the company trying to be strategically competitive by breaking into data in the first place, but they have absolutely no idea how to do it, so they figure the first thing they're going to do is just find a body and throw that person at it. And it virtually guarantees that you're not going to have any of the support or infrastructure that you need to be successful. So again, if you see this kind of thing, just run away. Now the last reason is over lack of upscaling opportunities. So you've been working at your job for some time and you start to realize that over the last six months to a year, you've kind of been working on the same types of projects over and over and you really haven't developed any new skills that you can add to your resume. And this is really an easy one to sympathize with because there are a lot of boring aspects of the job. You've got cleaning data, you've got playing politics. I mean, nobody said that it was going to be fun from start to finish, but there's got to be something in there that keeps things exciting. The data science field as a whole carries with it a lot of pressure to learn new skills, and I don't need to go through that list of skills in this video because I make fun of it all the time. But the need to upskill is completely legitimate and it's not something that I'm going to belittle or make fun of here. Because data science is an enormously technical field and with it comes enormous developments all the time. So it's incredibly important for people's long-term career prospects to at least keep some level of awareness or experience with these developments. So when you combine getting bored with not living up to the pressures which are imposed by the field, yeah, it's really easy to see why this could potentially be a problem. And hopefully this is something that sorts itself out organically as HR professionals and data professionals work together to increase employee retention and just to generally create data departments that people want to work in, that stay on the cutting edge of technology, and just provide long-term meaningful work for people to do. So overall, I'm going to come back to the fact that a lot of people, at least in the U.S., just simply don't have the same culture and attitude towards their employer that they did years and years ago. Most of the time, you just don't work at a place for 30 years anymore. You work somewhere until you're no longer learning anything new, or the culture no longer supports your professional development or your lifestyle. Then you find somewhere else. Or alternatively, you just find a job that just pays you more money and you go with that. And that's doubly so with data scientists who have a skill that's highly sought after in the marketplace. And that fact may have more to do with data science flight than anything which is systemic to the data science field as a whole. But in the end, employee turnover of any type can hurt organizations, and there are a few things which I do hope happen. Number one, academia stop pushing a false narrative about what data science actually practically is, because it leads to people having severely misleading expectations. Number two, prospective data scientists develop a stronger BS radar for companies that just simply do not have the necessary culture and infrastructure to support them, or that just generally expect them to be the go-to person for all things data. And then number three, more companies learn from each other about what it means to be a data-driven organization, as well as how to successfully incorporate data science into their products and services. If we see more of these things in the future, I have a feeling data scientists will be pretty happy with their jobs as we move into this decade. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to support my work, please consider sharing this video. Otherwise, again, please hit the like button and leave me a comment down below. Let me know, especially if you've quit your data science job, because I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.